I one it's about Hadron Collider, and we were just doing it, it was just coming on about CERN in Switzerland, and all of that was coming, so I thought, oh, well, that'll be really pertinent, but of course they went for a bit of mining in Wales instead. Well, Wales is a whole lot closer. So. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> I mean, you ended up playing sisters in that first one. I mean, as an actress, what do you go through trying to figure out, how do I differentiate these characters? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, I, I, what I basically did was because I was going, right, okay, lizards, lizard ladies, what am I going to do? And there's obviously the wonderful David Attenborough and all of his um, wildlife documentaries. And he um, brought one out called Life in Cold Blood. So I went straight out, bought the whole full DVD pack and just sat watching reptiles for a few days. <laughs> <clears throat> Which actually helped a lot as well because you started to, I picked two different reptiles to represent the two characters. So a monitor lizard is really strong and square and head on. So that was Restack. And then I found another little slithery one, which is a bit more Alea. And I used that to start where I, where I differentiated them. And I sort of left the voices just to come naturally out of that, I suppose. And I think it worked. So, no, it, yeah. it, it did. And of course, both of them end up dying over the course of the story. So spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen them episode there <laughs> seven years ago. <laughs> Um, and, and so, when did you find out that you were being considered for the role of Astra? Um, I wasn't considered, they just phoned up and went, we want Need back. And I went, but I'm dead. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> and then and they went, we get all female like uh, Silurians look like you. I was like, great. <laughs> You're pretty much uh, guaranteed a career at that point. Yeah, so any Silurians they want to write in, I'm your goal. <laughs> So once again, I mean, you've created two Silurian characters already, and you're co you have to come in and... They, what, what's the brief they gave you when you came in? They didn't really tell me much. It was just sort of like, yeah, we've written this for you, go for it. Um, and it was, of course, it was a lot cheekier and funnier, and Stephen was great at the read-through, and he just went, you know what you're doing? I was like, God, he thinks so good. I've got him fooled, that's one. <laughs> um, and they, yeah, they, they basically sort of left me to my own devices for that one. So they, you go from playing warrior sisters to um, Sherlock Holmes inspiration, Catan wielding, Victorian era living Silurian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In a word. I think that was more than one word. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you, you come on set, you've, worked with, you've already worked with Matt Smith again, what's it like coming back to work with him? It was fantastic, because he was just like, yeah, me, we've got you back, and this is fantastic, because he'd already read uh, A Few Men Go To War, and he said, oh, you're going to love the story, it's brilliant, and it's like we're bringing all these strands back in, and it, would, and it was just so much fun to make. Um, they gave me swords. I was happy. <laughs> um, I've done a lot of fencing in my life as well, and I've done some Japanese sword work as well, like kendo and iaido. Um, so I kind of knew roughly what I was doing. I was just, oh great, they gave me two swords. <laughs> so, um, no, it was lovely. Just, it's a kind of family feel when you go back and everyone's so happy to see you. So it's great. And of course, no one can miss me in my makeup. So, <laughs> yeah, it was great fun. But you had no hesitation on going back. I mean, how long do you spend in how long do you spend in makeup every I guess every day? Ah, this question. I've never been asked that before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go guys. Um, roughly on average, three and a half hours every morning that um, I'm in. Um, if they put my hands on that takes longer. And normally they try and get a, a one person to do each hand um, a person each on each hand because it can take almost two hours to do my two hands. There's so much painting involved in that. But um, yeah, three and a half hours every morning is quite harsh sometimes. That's why I quite like the big finish. Don't need to put it on for that. <laughs> and you, can't, you did a good man goes to war first and then you come back for the snowman. Yeah, or did we do Crimson Horror before that? Uh, it was afterwards. Was it? I think we filmed it before, that's why I'm thinking of it. We filmed a lot of stuff out of out of sequence. I had no idea. Yeah. I have learned something new today. Yay! <laughs> Need Macintosh. Informational. <laughs> <laughs> but um, coming back to the snowman, you worked with Richard E. Grant on that. And you yes. had worked with him before on an adaptation of Pound of the Baskervilles. Yes. Uh, what's it like working with one of the busiest character actors in the business? 
He's, he's, he's so funny and he's so wicked as well. Um, there's a few stories that I can't tell because there's children in the room. But, um, Cover your ears. He's, he's amazing for I mean, he would do stuff like, right, I'm done, I'm done for the day, I've had it. And then um, we'd be like, yeah, all right, Reg, calm down, it's fine. And then this bit with gleeful smile would come and say, watch this. And he ran all the way back to his, um, his Winnebago, but stripping off his costume as he went with this poor costume girl picking bits up and going, Reg, Reg, and he's going, ha ha, as he just <laughs> runs and jumps across. <laughs> he's fantastic fun. So you don't, you don't quite know what you're going to get with him. So when, you, when I saw that he was going to be in the snowmen, I was like, oh, this is going to be great fun. And of course, he just came up and started playing with my head. He's going, hello, you darling. Love the fins. <laughs> so yeah, it's fabulous. So much fun. And of course, you've also worked with Peter Capaldi on TV as well. And in his very first, I know it wasn't the first one he shot, but it was the first one that was broadcast. Um, I could be wrong about that. It would not be the first time. Uh, what was it like working with him, especially as the guy, as the new doctor coming in? It was incredible. I think that was the first that he, he filmed actually, because we were there. We the first scene he actually shot, and we'd already been out earlier doing the T Rex on the London sort of going ah, what's going to happen now? Um, and and on the banks well, after he's just been vomited back up by the T Rex and he comes out. That was his first scene as the Doctor, <laughs> and it was incredible. Because if you watch it again, watch the three of us in the background, because we're doing nothing but just watching him do his thing. And you sort of saw him go through little tiny glimpses of every doctor that had gone before. And I don't know if he did it deliberately or it's just his natural awesomeness. But it was beautiful. It was stunning to watch. And he came up to me and just gave me a hug and went, I'm so glad you're here. It's great. Come on, the Scots. So yeah. <laughs> he was fantastic. So yeah, I felt really privileged to be there that day for that. It was incredible. Well, deep breath, you also got to use your natural Scottish accent, um, because you normally speak, I think it's an estuary accent, am I correct? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a Silurian accent, so it's whatever <laughs> I want it to be at the minute. Yeah, I, I kind of, I always try and keep a little bit of the Scottish in, actually, especially when it comes to uh, rolling your arse. But, um, yeah, that was nice, Stephen wrote in a little sort of Scottish bit for me. And you've actually worked with another doctor as well, so speaking of Big Finish, which you brought up earlier, you worked on the late John Hurt's third War Doctor box set. An extraordinary actor with an extraordinary career. What was it like to come in? Uh, did you get to record together? So yes. First question. What was that experience like? Awesome. I mean, just, the man's, um, or was, uh, filling up and open. He was a genius. Um, I thought he was amazing. He um, was the most gracious man, I think. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm filling up with this. But um, he, the brilliant thing that I loved was um, he was so polite and so lovely. And because you're in your little booths and you get to laugh and joke a bit, but then comes the lunch and he just went, so, darlings, the obligatory glass of wine. And loads of people are like, oh, oh no, thank you, John. You know, I'm not going to go to the pub in the middle of the day. It's a professional sort of idea. And I'm like, no, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm going to sit and have a glass of wine with John Hurt and just chat and chew the fat with him. So yeah, amazing. And talking about some of your other big finish work, um, I haven't had the chance to listen to it yet. But speaking of being every female Silurian ever, you've recently done the Unit Assembled box set. Yes. Yes, I have. That was, I have to play another two sisters, <coughs> evil Silurian sisters. And I was like, oh, well, we've done this before. What am I going to do now? <laughs> so again, it's sort of, a, and at least that, it's more vocal, which is lovely. So uh, I've tried to change a bit of the vocality. Is that a word? I don't know. Um, <laughs> You've said it, so it is now. Yeah, it is now. It's <laughs> um, so yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, I'm, I haven't heard it yet. I'll be interested to hear how it is and how the response is to it, to me doing yet more Silurians. And technically you've worked with four doctors, though one of them you didn't get to work with in the show itself, David Tennant, uh, in a series yes. called Single Dad. Yeah, Single Father, yeah, that we did, that's fair. Um, I was so stoked at that. I was like, um, he's another lovely man. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to say anything bad about all these people. They're just so fantastic. And everyone since this, since I did Single Father, came up and went, you've got to hug him, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, very generous, lovely man. So yeah, slowly I'm probably going to make my way through all the doctors somehow. <laughs> well, Big Finish does seem to have everybody, so... Yeah. Yeah, I need to, uh, and you've got Tom Baker, Sylvester McCoy, we've got a few to get, yeah. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> so I want to touch upon some of the other stuff you've done in your career. Um, because you spend a lot of time behind makeup in Doctor Who, but yeah. you've had a lengthy career. And I'm going to say this, um, I kept thinking you looked familiar, and I couldn't figure out why, and I realized you're in Inspector Lindley. You're in one of the early Inspector Lindley episodes. Oh, God, yes. Oh, I play a really happy girl. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, ex heroin junkie with motor neuron disease, which you call something else here, uh, which I can't quite remember what it is. But yeah, it's a horrible debilitating disease, which um, you, you, your brain stays uh, completely alert and, and true to yourself, but your body slowly just closes down all around you. Is it Lou Gehrig's disease that you call it here? Yeah, well that's, yeah. Um, so that was... Yeah, ALS. ALS, thank you, Dan. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was... And so you got that here, Inspector Lindley? Yes, it aired on PBS here. They're actually reissuing them on uh, DVD and Blu-ray. Oh, wow. So oh, I watched it out of the library quite a few years ago now. Mm -hmm. I am there to hear me bore. <laughs> And I want to I actually touch back upon How Did the Baskervilles for a minute, because it's one of my all-time favorite Sherlock Holmes productions ever. Uh, with an extraordinary cast, Richard E. Grant, Richard Roxborough playing uh, Sherlock Holmes, and of course Ian Hart playing Watson. What was that like for you to work on? It was so much fun, because, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a classic. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, I like, read all the Sherlock Holmes books when I was a kid, I still have them on my shelf and I still take them out every now and again and just read a story um, and of course you're like, great, the Hound of the Baskervilles but of course a lot of it meant that we were filming out in really windy, cold, wet moors so you, there's lots of times where you as an actor, you're sitting or you're standing in all weathers looking back at the crew and they're all wrapped up in their own individual duvet you know, and you're like, oh, guys, I should get a sound job, he looks warm. <laughs> But uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Again, um, Ian Hart's fantastic. A very funny, funny man. Unfortunately, when he has a drink, he turns really liver in and I couldn't understand a word that he was saying. But yeah, apart from that, great. All right, I think we're going to open up questions to the audience. Nope. <laughs> Maybe. First, I think it was for um, Hungry Earth, I can't remember quite which. And, um, and I'm dressed up as Rest Stack so, for this one. And um, I'm just having fun, all the rest of it, but it's a beautiful temple, it's all open to the public and some of it. But they were trying to keep us really um, secret because nobody had seen the, the new Silurian look. But there was a woman with her little boy came out and he was like, Mummy, Mummy, you know, they're filming Doctor Who. And I'd have my back to him, and I turned around and went, yes, we are. And he went, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> he ran so fast, and he was like, oh, God, sorry. Again, I think it was the Symphonic Spectacular for the 50th anniversary. Yes, yes, we did um, the Royal Albert Hall proms, the Doctor Who proms, which was fantastic fun. That was, I was so nervous though. <coughs> Not just having all the makeup on, I was sweating anyway underneath it all because we had to have, we had our own cue cards in our hand, and, but we also had the teleprompter to read off of. But um, they kept coming up to me going, eh, no, me if you don't pronounce it like that. So, I'm sorry. Um, so we were lucky we had two days that we shot it, but I have to say, nobody knew that Dan and I were going to be there. 
and when we both walked out, I've never heard 6,000 people make so much noise. We were like, we couldn't speak at first, we were just standing there going, okay. <laughs> Looking at each other, okay, yeah. And, hi. <laughs> Fabulous. Next question. Do you have any memories of working on Gorman Glass? Oh, loads, my gosh. That's, gosh, that's, that's a long time ago, man. Wow. Um, loads. I mean, my first day, when you go to the read-through and everyone's sitting around the table and everyone reads out the script and gets to meet each other for the first time, and I was, got sat next to Johnny Rees Myers, and of course, both of us were completely unknown. And, <laughs> We're sitting there's Christopher Lee, and Celia Imry, and Dean Richardson, and all these people that I'd grown up watching in movies and television. And um, we sort of reached down and we held each other's hand and just went, Are you scared? I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> and from that point on, though, we, we got on so well and great. And I love, I got to shout at Christopher Lee. <laughs> I got to shout at Christopher Lee. He was wonderful. Call me Chris. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dracula. <laughs> All right, next question. Another question you may have heard a couple of times, if the stars and the moon and the TARDIS align in the Paternoster game was to be spin off and you were would that be something how uh, <laughs> Yes, 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 absolutely, in a heartbeat, my love, in a heartbeat. Hello, up the back. Hello. Um, have you got to keep anything from the sets that you've been on? What, all Doctor Who? Yes, on Doctor Who, oh, or Doctor in general. Oh, in general, not really. They really they keep an eye on like the ray guns and the things I really want to see. <laughs> They're no fun. Um, no, not really. Although, uh, sh sh don't tell anyone. But um, I did take one of my faces home. The girl who took it off, rather than cutting it into bits, so I actually have that on a little stand of my face on my wall in a Perspex glass box. <laughs> <laughs> You were one of my favorite characters, and I have a question. Whose sonic screwdriver would you want to keep if you got to? Ooh. Do you know what? The one, the one that I used to love because it was just so weird and bobbly was the, the, the John Pertwee one. I mean, it was almost like the concert first one, wasn't it? I can't remember now. Uh, second. Actually. Was it the second? I Thank have you. one actually. Ah. I'll have to bring it for you. Yeah, I loved it. I can pose with a few photos and that. I loved it because it was just, yeah. I think that one. <clears throat> Do you have a favourite? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Smith and David Okay. <coughs> okay. <laughs> All right, next question. I see a hand right there. Yes. Um, oh, is this on? No. Oops. Uh, okay. Um, I and her lovely human wife, Jenny. Um, if your character comes back, um, would you want them to bring Jenny back with her? And um, like, what kind of development would you get? Like, oh yeah, I mean, there's no Vastra without Jenny now, is there? Really, or Strax? It's, it's we, we're a little trinity to herself. I mean, I would just love to see see us explore what they can do, and where they can go, and you know how much good they can do in the universe. You know, that's what I'd like to see. It'd be nice to do a little backstory. You know, maybe a special of the wedding. <laughs> we get someone from, what's it, say yes to the dress. <laughs> we we'll Jenny and Vastra fighting over who gets to wear it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, something like that would be lovely. But yeah, just to see where we could go, we could do anything. So, what what is your take on, like, the sort of just juxtaposition between the elegance of the Madame Vastra costume and the bulky, clumsy nature of Strax. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's, it's, see, I'm getting it to all the costume as well, and he just turns into this little tank. 
<laughs> and then when we put his little uh, top hat on, I thought that was fantastic. I think it just it just works. You know, you need you need the counterpoints to make to make um, things sing, I suppose. But I think that that's the genius of what Moffat's done with those three, and with Mark Gatiss as well with some of his writing for us. Yeah. So yeah. Do you like it? I love it. Excellent. Good. Do you know if you're going to be in this, in this current season of Doctor Who? I don't. I'm sorry, love. I've no idea. I've no idea if and when I'm going to be back. I'm sorry. i uh, hopefully soon. That's all I can say. What? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> if you could bring back, if you could bring back one Doctor Who, would it be? Oh, that's a good question. Think carefully before you answer. You know, one looks on the other side of that wall. Who's that? No. Uh, oh, 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 can I say all of them? I loved all of them. Um, my my favourite growing up was Tom Baker. So I loved when he came back in the 50th and he was just looking at the picture at the end. I loved that. Um, oh, gosh. All of them. We should do that. Just do a big... How many's left? <laughs> Not the five doctors, the, all the doctors episode. In the storyline, the Crimson Horror, did you get a chance to work with Diana Rigney? Yeah. And as a kid, could I look for experience about, about it with her? She's incredible. Uh, I managed to get away with calling her Dame D. And she loved it. She loved you. <laughs> um, she was phenomenal. She was fantastic. And um, she would always be like going, look, look at Mr. Sweet, <laughs> look at Mr. Sweet. <laughs> and of course her daughter Rachel was in it as well, her and I got on really well as well, we kept in touch. Um, but she's just this, I mean she's tiny, and you know, you, you think of her as being actually quite big, because you're used to seeing her on the big screen, or, and she's this tiny little lady who's just this a ball of power. And she was, she was fantastic, just phenomenal, yeah. You've also recently worked with Ian McNeese, uh, who plays Winston Churchill. You recently did, it's not out yet, I don't think it'll be out until early next year, uh, the Winston Churchill box set that's coming out. Yep, I did indeed. They're doing, um, Big Finish are doing, uh, I think it's only four stories, but it might be more of the sort of the Churchill memoirs. And so it flashes back into him meeting the Doctor and their adventures, and then Madame Vastra turns up in one. Yes! To help out the young Churchill. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I was wondering, what was your best and worst memory on set? Oh gosh, best memory, probably the first time that we filmed in the new console room. I loved that, because someone said to me, you realise you're the first, apart from Matt, to ever film in this room. And then they, they turned it on where it spins at the top. And I was just like going, oh, wow, that is so cool. And Matt's just chuckling at me like, I'm oh, just a little boy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so that was brilliant. Unfortunately, my worst memory was that after when we were doing that scene and filming it, we had to do a sort of jig between each other. He was going behind me, and of course, I always had my sword on my back. And I moved slightly wrongly, so did he, and I clunked his teeth, and I think I chipped one of his teeth with it. But he was, he was very nice about it, and I was mortified. I was just, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. So, yeah, that's my worst memory. Any more questions? Oh, there's a hand up. Oh, right there. Sorry. Hi, Nate. Uh, Hi, darling. Hi, Matthew. The, uh, 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 first, uh, a comment. Uh, don't take the screwdriver from Matthew. The, uh, you'll never get it through Homeland Security. It's, uh, <laughs> take it from experience. My question is, uh, you're, you've, not, uh, you've not been in Doctor Who with your own face. So if you had an opportunity to play, because Dan Starkey did, uh, if you had an opportunity to play somebody uh, looking just as you do, would, it be, would you prefer it to be a heroic figure or a villainous figure? Ooh. Oh, I don't know. Actually, that's an interesting one. Because yeah, because I was really, I was really chuffed when I got the first uh, two twins that they were evil. And I was like, yeah, it's good to be an evil character. But um, and then of course, being good, you get to come back because you'll get killed. 
<laughs> so there's that to consider. So it'll be good, it'll be a goodie. <laughs> This is true, actually. Yeah, there's oh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with a good bit of old redemption, isn't there? Yeah, that, I'll try that one. <laughs> well, that's what Astra seems to be based on what little we know about her background. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely been there's the part of the story in The Good Man Goes to War. Yeah, that she was sort of woken up by them building the the London Underground and decided to take revenge on all the all the workmen. But yeah, then has been turned. So yeah. Are they? Ooh, could regenerate into Missy. Ooh, <laughs> interesting. Or it would be lovely actually to come back as some random Gallifreyan who's been bobbing around the universe for a bit. Yeah. You could be the new Ronnie. Who's, oh, Ronnie. Ooh, yeah, just that as well. Ooh, there's so many at sci-fi, you can do whatever you want, really. <laughs> Which version of the TARDIS is your favorite? Ooh. Ooh. Tom Baker again, I'm sorry. I know I keep going back to that, but it's my, sort of my classic in my head with the column going up and down, all the up. Um, and he's always twinkling in amongst it because it never works properly. I loved all of that, all of that one. You? What's yours? All of them. Excellent. <laughs> Good answer. Oh, actually, yeah, the Paul McGann one is very funky. Yeah, cool. Uh-oh, we have a question from a Suntari. Strax! <laughs> you be little lemon sherbet again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my question is, um, if you had a TARDIS, where and when would you go? Oh, oh gosh. God, uh, good questions. They're really hard, some of these. I don't know, um... There's so many amazing things that you could go back in time to see. But it would also be kind of very cool to sort of like leap forward and go like visit some of your family in Cognito and just see what they're up to. <laughs> <laughs> go to your own funeral or something and make sure that they're saying nice things about you. <laughs> so this isn't actually a question, but sort of comments. So, talking about coming back, possibly, as, you know, some other character with your real face, I want to put a plug in that I think you would totally pull off an awesome female doctor, the first one. Oh, wow! You, you've got the personality for that. I can see that now that I see you Thank heard. you! Oh my god, that, that would be, that would just be incredible. I think I'd fall down in a dead faint if that happened. <laughs> and then I'd pick myself up and get on with it, obviously. <laughs> most recent doctors, um, from Eccleston up to Capaldi, which one would you have preferred to be a companion to and why? If I hadn't had Matt. Oh, look at the Matt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's not? Um, I don't know, I would love to work with Chris Eccleston. I have to say, I've been a fan of his work for a long, long time. I've already worked with David, I've worked with Matt, and I've worked with Peter, so it would have to be Chris, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I loved him as the doctor, he was so intense. As well, there was that. There's some brilliant stories as well. So yeah, I'd like to, yeah, go. Uh, cast and crew. Is there still anybody that you hang out with? You might go get a drink with. And whose number is in your phone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I hang out with Dan quite a lot in London because we we got on so well. So we always try and meet up and sometimes have a nice boozy lunch down by the river and spend the time of day. Yeah. Um, and sometimes on, on Twitter. Um, I'm still in touch with Katrin as well. And actually, fantastically, at the moment I'm doing a thing in Scotland and there's a lovely lass, Vivian, who's one of the makeup girls of Doctor Who, is working on that, doing my makeup. So it's brilliant, so we get a good catch up on that. But yeah. Anyone else? What was your favourite memory of working with Matt Smith? Oh, gosh, so many. Um, I think just, you know, when the first day that I met him, and surprise, surprise, we're out in a quarry somewhere in the wet. Um, uh, and he was just like, oh my God, because he was just looking at my face. And I was like, hi, I'm Neve. And he was just like, oh, wow. And he said, like, can I touch you? <laughs> I was like, um, yeah, go on. I was like, oh, get my spines on. <laughs> and he was like playing around with it. So I just like to go and make my leg move like it was a dog getting scratched. <laughs> 